mean? You're known for these big extravaganzas. I mean, the cocktail glass, the carousel, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. When, what was the transition into that? Um, I guess that was around um, 2000. Uh -huh. I partnered up with somebody who's my closest friend and partner in crime, and we start we kind of banded together. She and I were both headlining these strip clubs, and everyone kept saying, you've got to meet this other girl, because she was like the only one doing what I was doing, uh -huh. you know, with the burlesque style in these strip clubs. And so we got together and we were like, let's make the most elaborate stage props and costumes anyone's ever seen. We used, I mean, just little by little, we just built these huge shows together. We, wow. we were on a mission to like, you know, change the way burlesque was done and yeah. to create these big, lavish shows. What was the first big prop? Was it the cocktail first glass? First one was or? the cocktail glass, yeah. yeah. We used to do this act where we had dueling glasses where it was me and the martini glass, like the 60s style against her champagne glass. Uh -huh. So we do like a dueling strip tease and um, that was the first thing. And then the carousel horse. And we, uh, Hugh Hefner used to come to see a lot of my shows around right. town with all of his girls. and. Um, he saw my show, and then one night after one of the shows, he's like, I want to put you on the cover of the Christmas edition of Playboy. Wow. And we were like, whoa. So we started really like um, building even more props and costumes to put in this um, pictorial. Wow. And then, so that was probably, that was, was that your, what you think your breakout moment was, was being I on think, the cover of Playboy? Yeah, because it was a time where like Playboy was still a cachet, and like yeah. Drew Barrymore was on the cover, and like a lot of these. Like, right, and that was kind of around Girls there. Next Door era where it yeah, was really yeah. permeating pop culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was it was a really it was a very unusual cover. It said, you know, fetish is back. Here's who's leading the charge, and it was like, you know, me in a corset, and it was very different than anything Playboy was really doing. So it got a lot of attention at the time. Right. And then, how did you feel? Like, how how did your life change after that? Um, I, I mean, mean, I mostly felt like I had to live up to all these things. Like, I would read these articles. I'd be like, I better start. I got to live up to all this stuff. It made me just like work harder and become more. Um, focused on the actual work and, and, you know, being a better performer. Right. I mean, having all that. Now, did you do the Playboy shoot and be like, we'll take all of these props with us? Well, they were mine. Oh, they were yeah, yours. They okay. were mine. I, we, I made them all. Like, Amazing. there's some things already existed, and then we were making more costumes to flesh it out, and we styled the whole shoot together, me and my friend. And But they were all mine. They didn't give me any money for costumes <laughs> or any budget, and nobody ever understands how much those things cost, really. It's like very few people get how much, what the value is yeah. of those things. Hey, queen.